Hey Legionnaires and welcome back. We're here with another epic 12-12 siege battle for you today and we have the Abbasid Empire landing onto the walls of a city held by the Swiss and Kiev. An interesting alliance but I'm sure it will work and from the other side their allies we have the Empire of Nicaea coming to their aid. Some interesting alliances <laughs> since Nicaea and the Abbasids would be attacking each other. Um, usually probably in history, but yeah, this will be an interesting one. Um, it's a very, very good defensive, nice last stand. We've got some nice, good looking units for the Swiss. I've just seen in the, like, the center of the map. We've got like the men at arms, men at arms here. Look at these guys. Uh, what a weird helmet. And then we've got these guys. Uh, I'm pretty sure these are the, uh, bodyguard unit. What are they called? Foot bodyguard. What a great name. And then their black armor as well. They look glorious. Remind me of um, the Black Prince. Uh, Edward the Black Prince. With like his famous black armor for England. And I mean we're just about to have a wall come down here. And there you go. The wall has crumbled. And it looks like the Abbasids are going to be going up against Kiev. We have some heavy smurred spearmen. The first in the line here. And they just watch as this breach comes down. And what is going to come through it? Probably a load of uh, infantry in a moment. When they uh, when they eventually come on cue. There you go. That's a little bit too quick for them. And there you go. Some uh, footwear Jun coming through the gap first. And they'll go into combat with these spears here. And uh, yeah, the gates come down and I lose a load of troops here. I am playing in this one. I am playing as the uh, Abbasid Empire. So uh, it will be interesting to see how I fare today. We have a lot of troops now on the wall, and I thought they were stuck, but they can get off this one here, so uh, we should be okay. We should be. Um, but yeah, so if you are enjoying the content at the moment and would like to see more 12-12 action, then don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support. And once we get to 2k subs, there will be a face reveal, and uh, for all those uh, legionnaires that are wanting to, wanting to see... Uh, who it, the face behind the voice, I guess. But I mean, look at these, uh, look at these units. I'll stop babbling on about uh, face reveals and actually start playing uh, while looking at the battle. And I mean, look at that shield. It looks so glorious. That officer is uh, 10 out of 10. I would want to be an officer of Kiev. But uh, on the other side, it looks like Nice here is also just getting off the wall now himself. He's a little bit behind Abbasids, but they are attacking him fairly simultaneously. And he is facing the Swiss. Uh, and, well, I mean, they've got an interesting defense here. I don't know why they're defending here. Um, there's no way where for this to go. I would have defended at least this choke point here. Um, but, I mean, we've got pikes in this formation. We've got... We've got um, swords. I mean, I guess they're defending the archers that are, like, camped here. But, I mean, you don't need three units to defend two units of archers. But, I mean, this does look a very cool defense. I won't lie. And I like their, uh, their swords. But um, we look like we're about to have the first class of infantry. We've got, well, we've got Footwar Jund here that look like they're just standing off ready to go in. Oh, we have actually had the first clash. Here we go. Footwar Jund here fighting the smurred infantry. The smurred spearmen. It's the east of uh, Europe against the Middle East. Who will come out? Who will be the superior Eastern faction? I mean, you expect these Footwar Jun to beat uh, the Smurd Spearmen because these are a tier one uh, foot, uh, Smurd infantry or Smurd Spearmen, and these are a tier three. And uh, it does tiers do come into it ever so slightly, I'd say. Like, so I mean, maybe not in this scenario because they are just in a shield wall and they're a spear unit. But certainly in the open field, you want tier 3 facing off against tier 1 and tier 3 9 times out of 10 will come out up on top if you're facing a tier 3 army you want a tier 3 army of your own because they probably got better technology or like weaponry because they are like your a tier 1 is a 13th century while a tier 3 is a 15th century so in those two centuries you imagine a lot has changed in the world of warfare We've got arrows coming in now. Who's firing arrows? Um, this might be the general, actually, I think, here. The general is actually shooting into his own troops. But, and we've got a unit coming around the walls here, since this is the only way they can get off now. 
And uh, they are being wait, uh, waited on by uh, Rataniki. Um, so we will hopefully realize in a moment there's Rataniki there and fall back. Yep, I think that's the moment I decide, right, it's time to go back. Because I don't really want to go down there and fight Rataniki uh, 1v1. Because I'll get focused down by the towers. So And then they've also got cavalry loitering around. So we don't really want to be fighting that. My uh, most elite units here are definitely these Mamluk foot guards. They are, well, they're just awesome. They've got really good uh, bow capability and they are really good with their swords. And, uh, well, they're also Silver Chevron for me, so they are really, really elite. And whilst that's been happening, we are starting our engagement on the uh, right flank as well. Again, it's just the same matchup, Smurd Infantry or Smurd Spears against uh, Footwar Jund. And it looks like down the center, we're going to be facing a load of heavy Smurd as well. That's a nice, nice defense, though. Look at that. And here we go. The clash begins. And his footwear jund will go in against the Smurd infantry. Defend the banner. The banner of Kiev. I mean, it's just a red, it's just a golden crown. But still. Defend it with your lives. Then on this side we've got the the crescent on the green of the Abbasids. For Islam. They are fighting for. And probably other reasons, just like land. Uh, we do have the uh, Dismount Devore here, which is a really good counter to, uh, like, the Abbasid, like, uh, the Abbasid of Mamluks. Because, well, these guys are equally just as good as, in combat as they are shooting, just like the Abbasid Mamluks. So, I mean, uh, that is definitely going to be a really good matchup there when they start fighting. Over on this side, Nicaea now is uh, sending in some of his swords to fight. Um, some Xerox swordsmen, he's got some uh, scoop tatoy, I don't know, I'm just going to call them swords. The Byzantine swords against the Swiss swords, who comes out on top? And it looks like it's going to be, well, see this is a second, uh, 14th century, a second tier, a two tier um, sword against a three tier sword. And you can see the difference, winning decisively, losing decisively, that might have been even in any, any other scenario. I mean, even with the archer support uh, that the Swiss are support, like giving, they're not able to win this combat. Like you can see how like massively more armored up the uh, Byzantines are compared to the uh, Swiss. I mean, they are also getting shot on the walls as archers up here, which I'm sure is not helping. And they've got a better angle than these guys, but even still, they need to be. Uh, that's like what happens when you don't have the right tier units. I mean, I'm sure he has got a lot of tier three. Yeah, he's got tier three over here. His copper shields are uh, his most elite swords here. Let's have a look at the, these guys. Oh, they've got a nice, like, round shield. I like that. And they've got the funky helmets going on again. Are they going to get engaged? They've got some more swords here ready. Look at that face. Got like, that is literally a copper face on a shield. I guess that's where they get the name, maybe. Who knows? Um, there's cavalry over here that's just charged down. So this was an infantry unit that was trying to flank around and surround these Uruk swords. Uh, and the cavalry is like, right, we're going to charge what's left at the bottom of the wall. And, uh, yeah, these poor guys in here, you can sort of see them behind the cavalry. Yeah, they're getting massacred, those ones. The rest on the wall are doing fine. Apparently, they're winning decisively, but there you go. They break because of that charge from the cavalry. So that was really nicely done there by the uh, Kai Kyburn notables. I mean, that was a tier one, in fairness. So even a cavalry charge on a tier one on a tier three. It's still dangerous. It's just the danger of cav. And here we go. The Dinatoy is coming down to deal with that cavalry of the Swiss. And uh, this is some pretty heavy shock against melee. If they, I don't know if they got a great charge off. Um, yeah, I mean, they're losing decisively now. Maybe that will be enough? I don't know. It's a tier 1 against tier 3. Melee should be better in, like, prolonged melee, but I don't know if this is going to be the case. And he's falling back, which will cost him some more lives. Back on this side, I mean, it's turning into a huge grind, really, over here. This is, I mean, the Smurd Spears are losing decisively, but with the support of their, um, I think it's the Rataniki in here. Oh, no, uh, Boigatiri. They are, uh, well, they're doing just fine. On this flank, we have been uh, broken. We have been broken here. You can see that this flank is getting absolutely peppered by a dismounted Devore. This is literally where all of them are. I mean, well, three of them are. And they're getting battered, and this footwear junt is, uh, well, losing and is lost. We've got another unit ready, though. But, I mean, I'm allowing them to advance because I was thinking, well, it allows my archers 
these guys up here to be even closer to the front line. They get a better angle now. And uh, yeah, they can now have an even better angle shoot on here. And you can see already, look at that. Rataniki losing decisively. Just because they are uh, shooting. like a bit. Look at that angle. That is just, you cannot miss in here. All the arrows are just going over my lines and into theirs. And I will tell you this, this area here turns into an absolute mess of a battle. And you can see it already is now. Like, just look at the bodies. God, I love this mod. This just, it just shows the medieval chaos off so well sometimes. There's bodies dropping everywhere. Arrows flying over. Headless bodies. And yeah, I mean, these, uh, look at that. The smurred spears already breaking. And the Rataniki, oh no, no, the Rataniki. Oh, it is actually, sorry are also going to break, just like that. And then I'm into the Dismounted Devore, which, I mean, they're going to be hard to fight in combat. I mean, they are setting up some more Rataniki, but they are going to be hard to beat. But at least it's worth it. I mean, look how many archers are firing over here. These are all firing, firing here. I mean, I'm barely taking any damage, and they are desperately trying to shoot at me on the walls. Um, I don't think I'm doing them any damage either, though, because both units are just so heavily like, armored. And we're now focusing down these uh, Dismounted Devore back here as well. This choke point over here, not really much of a movement, but you can look at like the sheer amount of like Kievians in here. This is insane. And that man just, just just like beheaded someone with a spear. How he's done that, I have no idea. But it, I mean, hopefully over here. I mean, it looks like the cavalry here has been charging against the copper shields, because that's a really smart idea. Um, and uh, hopefully they can carry that on. And also, you can see that, well, they have a secret weapon to the Byzantines. It's this unit. It's basically Greek fire. They basically are men with flamethrowers that fire Greek fire. And, uh, yeah, they can, they can get a lot of kills. They can rack up kills. And uh, my ally was like, well, if they're going to hold themselves up in this, uh, in this little defense here, let's burn them out. And I was like, yeah, go for it. What a better place to use it. That is the perfect place to use it. And over here, look, this cavalry, which I have, this is getting chaos. Um, this cavalry literally went the whole way around after beating the, like, its opponent over there. It went the whole way around. This was free uh, at the time and rear charged into here. They broke the smurred infantry, but the smurred infantry in retreating, they started to retreat already. They broke the charge and didn't do as much damage as they could have done to, like, the Rasaniki. And now this cavalry is stuck the wrong side of the, uh, well, of the conflict, really. And these Dinatoy with their Imperial shields are uh, probably going to get cut down. Because look at the sheer amount of Kievian troops now coming. There are so many over here. They've got the General. They've got Foot Bodyguard of the Swiss over here. We've got Men at Arms. They literally, like, mobilize their entire center just to come and deal with this cab. They got so scared of a one tiny little unit of cab. I mean, one tiny unit of cab, though, can do a lot of damage. So... It was uh, definitely worth being scared, but certainly the Rasaniki on their own that they sent over would have been enough. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're now just reinforcing this formation even more, and the cavalry's broken and dead. Which is a real shame. And uh, at this point, I'm bringing in my uh, Culverine. I, for some reason, get my men off the crew. Uh, I know I got my troops off it because they were shooting it. But, um, they are now leaving. And uh, at this point, yeah, I sent up my foot mamelukes to shoot into the flank here to try and get a better angle on helping that area out there because we were shooting from here and we weren't doing anything and sadly I can't go up onto the wall because I destroyed it now and I lost all the towers so we need to be careful of that in the future but it's, that's always an issue and uh, yeah I mean these foot mamelukes have lost a few troops I think because they've been in combat here but these foot are still fighting the good fight and uh, at this point I decide to call a general retreat and you're thinking, what are you doing, Pope? And uh, because I'm breaking my, forcing my own troops to break. But I was like, well, they're, I know they're in a defensive line. They're probably not looking at this. So, and I want to use my cannon. I want to use my culverine. I'm going to shoot down the street. And I'm going to cause a lot of pain and suffering for these guys. Um, this unit here, this foot Mameluke, is just going to be a rear guard for now. While the others retreat to make sure they don't try and charge down the street and catch me out. Over here, you can see... Um, some of my foot Mamelukes are basically out of ammo, so I sent them into combat. They are actually holding it just fine. Over here, we're winning against Rataniki again. Due to the archers being so close and able to focus fire. So 
So that's excellent. And uh, as you can see here, we now pull back. I think I fired off one salvo, or I'm going to here. My, uh, my opponent realizes what's going to happen. Still doesn't stop me getting off a volley. And, uh, I mean, I think now they're mobile, like, going to mobilize Cav to try and come for me in a moment. This Cav here is definitely a bit close. It's the General's Bodyguard for the Swiss, and it's not actually their General. That's pretty cool. Um, I mean, he does look awesome. Again, in black armor. Looks glorious. Glorious. On this side, I think we've had... Um, the oh, I think we missed the fire. Sorry, I do apologize. We've missed the fire, but, it, I mean, look, you can see what, like, chaos ensued over here. I mean, they still have some uh, ammo, and they are, are still alive. They got absolutely focused down by archers and charged. Um, but yeah, this uh, pike unit is basically finished. They're now sending in some of their guard unit, which are really, really good. They've got, like, uh, javi capability, along with uh, just being excellent in, s in sword combat. But it's not the end of the world. If we miss that fire action, I know there is more, because we have Nafatoons, or Barad and Engineers. It just reminds me of Barrad, just like Barrad Dur. And uh, my Mamluks have gone in here. They charged in. I was like, right, if they're not going to form up properly, I was going to try and get around since they've given up the choke point. But uh, we've been countered, and uh, I'm going to lose a fair few Mam Mamluks for this. But uh, it's a worthy loss to try try that out. And now they're sending in their general's bodyguard. This is a bit late. Um, their ally did not want, like the Kiev did not tell the Swiss to do this. But the Swiss are sending in a general's bodyguard. And, uh, well... This could be an issue because I'm going to have to like get my crew off the, yeah, I get my crew again off the cannon so I was a bit worried. And now the Jublin Ma Mamluks are going to have to go in along with the Mamluk foot guard and fight against these, uh, well these uh, General's bodyguard basically. I mean they do look great in their black armor. I think black armor should be used more often. It's probably very expensive but... Should use it more, guys. Very expensive in that period, I'm sure. But yeah, I mean, they're actually winning decisively. I don't know who they're winning decisively against. Just about everything. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, my my Mamluks, uh, both foot and mounted, are uh, just having a really hard time. I mean, don't know why, but they, I guess the charge got off. But I mean, we now should be firing on them. Yeah, we're now firing on them with just about everything. And here comes uh, some smurred spears. I mean, this is like kind of going into my favor. They're closer to this wall, and uh, this is an issue for them. They're now going to carry on their charging. My uh, Mamluks need to get out of there. My mounted ones, anyway. And now it's just down to the infantry. And uh, now they're not in their shield wall, so this will work in my favor. Hopefully. We'll come back to that in a moment. But you can see Nicaea's basically one on this side. Um, like, after the massacre that went on here, this is a huge amount of the Swiss that they killed off. Um, and they're taking this point here. They can now come across if they want to and support over here. But, yeah, the uh, Swiss are now in full retreat. To the main cap point, they've got uh, Kyberg foot guards, uh, foot knights here. Sorry, and um, yeah, these guys are pretty awesome. But they are tier one, so this is gonna be good for us. And they've got more tier one stuff here. They're foot nobles, but they are tier one. So I mean, that's all well and good. And uh, yeah, here we go. Nafatoon's coming up. Barred engineers. And look at that. Oh god, this is gonna be painful. Look at the amount of fire it causes to start with. And then, oh my gosh. And then the choke point is gone. Just gone. And another volley. I mean, it kills a lot of my foot while Jun, but it's a worthy sacrifice. And oh my gosh. And it's causing an absolute, like, devastation. Those Barrett engineers have just caused Armageddon, almost. That was disgusting. And yeah, I mean, they're in full retreat because of that. And I don't blame them. Kiev's like, I'm not having any of this. And his units are wavering as it is anyway. He's trying to get them back. Uh, he's got... Oh, yes, over here, I sent my... My uh, footwear jumped off the wall. Because there was nothing here. I got charged by uh, the guard, but... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And now they might be charging down here, I guess, to come and counter us. But we are now in full assault up here. Full assault. And they're looking the wrong way, which helps. But yeah, now Kiev's falling back. Kiev is falling back. And I'm like, right, we cannot allow it. My general and my other Mamluk unit are in here. And I've got to catch this Kiev uh, like force. So these, um, all these dismounted four cannot allow them to get back to the final defensive spot. Because they will be really useful for our final defense. 
And they're just like looking down the street and like, oh god, there's cavalry at the far side. They're like, quickly, man, pick up the pace. Pick up the pace. But I mean, we are already covered the uh, choke point. So these uh, Kievan troops are probably in for trouble. I mean, but then the swords stop them. So they might be able to, but we just pulled through because we can. And here we go. It's going to be painful. Oh! Those German Ma Mamluks. I mean, they're one of the best cavalry units in the game by far. And, uh, yeah, they just destroyed that first unit. It's already down to 89. And now they're running away. They're like, no, we're going to run away. And uh, there's another one here that we're going to try and catch. I mean, I could, I could do with a bit of support from Nicaea now to come around and come support. But, yeah, like, they're sending out some copper shields to come and deal with this cavalry. Works into my favor again because it means I can entice more troops into this area here. They've just allowed me to capture another sword unit. I break up this sword unit. And then we can send in more cavalry and deal with them. We're bare, we're like still fighting in this choke point here, insanely. Some smurred infantry. This is a sword unit, a light sword. This is actually tier 3. It's a tier 3 light sword unit. And uh, it's actually going head to... It's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with these uh, Mamelukes at the moment. But I mean, well, barely toe-to-toe -to -toe because they are losing decisively. But they are sort of going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And now, I mean, the Devor are doing what they do best. And they're just opening fire onto all this cavalry over here. They're like, right... We'll kill it, we'll gun it down, and we'll get through. But yeah, they've uh, they've forced the cavalry back. I'm now going to put infantry in and just close this area off. And we've got more cavalry here. We've got the Dinatoy coming around. And I was like, thank God. Thank the lords. Thank whatever god. Muslim or orthodox. That they are here. Because then we can just surround these guys. I actually was kind of worried that these guys might break through and kill half my army. But it's not going to happen. These Dinatoy, they're going to come through the ruins. And oh my gosh. That was painful. I mean, they've just gone through the entire unit. That's a unit that was at full strength. And it's already down about half in one charge. And when they start to get up, they'll get cut down. They are winning that decisively. They'll move into the next couple. And look at that. Surrounding these guys. Yeah, losing decisively. They're actually still holding. They're doing okay. And I've now decided I'm just going to cut off this area here. We'll fight in the choke point against the copper shields. So nothing else can come out and support. And then these guys are now free to just engage. Though it'll be hard. I mean, we're getting absolutely focused down in the rear here. And the cavalry is beaten back by the uh, dismounted DeVore. Which shows like how strong these guys are. These guys are nasty. And they can actually sneak around if they want to now. And get into the rear of my uh, combat over there. But that goes into my favor because I want them to do that. Because I've got more Mamluks to come up. More Mamluks to come up and just charge into them. And they are actually breaking my footwall jund here. And they're focusing down my Barrett Engineers, which I didn't realize at the moment. But I'm about to, I think, at a moment. And uh, I need to get them out of there desperately. I need those uh, Engineers for as long as possible. And what is this? This is, uh, oh, my footwall jund breaking. Yeah, look, it's, I lose about five or six before I realize and go, oh, let's get these guys out of here. And uh, now my swords are now going into combat. They're going to hold up these uh, dismounted devour as much as possible. Don't want them firing. If we can keep them in combat, that's better. And we can break them eventually. Then on the other side, you can see that the final assault is beginning on this side. We have some uh, swords. We have some anglo Varangoi. Uh, Baranjoy going up and uh, I mean these guys should eventually break through this uh, choke point here look at the bright shields that they have it's glorious I do love the 13th century stuff it's, they have so much more brightness I think to them than like the later periods where it's just like pure chainmail and everyone's just a mix of chainmail and you can't tell who's who but they've got gunners up here they're firing their gunners the Swiss they've got all their technology I think they're trying to shoot down these archers not a bad target to go for I feel like this is a period where the Swiss are just like, they're not actually being neutral. They're actually fighting people. They're not even firing directly at them, but uh, I'll I'll let them off. If they're hitting them, then that's fine. But, uh, I think they're trying to shoot these gun yeah, those archers. They're not getting many kills. Gunners, I think, are great for like, shooting into the rear. Maybe not shooting into the front, but shooting into the rear, they're great. And there you go. Look at this. The dismounted Devore broke through, and they're going to surround my footwear jund at the bottom of this uh, slope here. So that's not going to help. But now we can just surround them again. We're going to counter flank them, which is what the cavalry's doing here now. This Dino Toy is just going ham. Ah, 
And, uh, well, I think I'm setting in Foot Watch as well. We've got, like, Mamluks in here. We've got all sorts. And we have broken everything here now. This whole area is gone. And that's perfect. I'm bringing up my artillery to uh, carry on the fight, carry on shooting at them. I won't allow my, uh, like, I'm just going to try and battle my way through this uh, front line with artillery. And we've got generals here. We've got, uh, I mean, what are these? Archer sergeants. We've got pl they've still got plenty left. And I think they just fired their um, their shots again. But I don't know if they got many kills. But they've used up all their ammo of these guys. Shame that we didn't see them in combat. I should have tried to like show them. But I mean, there will be more battles with these guys in. They are pretty fun to watch. But yeah, I don't see many kills. They like often get like a lot of kills. And uh, my engineers, yeah, they've gone like a long way back. They are so far back. I was that paranoid about them being shot. And their general is uh. I think he went into combat. He lost a few men. And we've got the Dinotoys now around here. That was around, uh, at my flank. It's now coming around here. Needs to be careful. It doesn't get broken. I've got some uh, Mamluk Lancers as well. Ah, I see. What this is like going on for like ages. Like this cat and mouse between their general. He kept coming out sometimes. That's like the shortest amount he came out. He came out like all the way to here once. And trying to catch us. And then trying to get us with swords. Which is fine. Because our cavalry at this point was kind of useless. Um, I mean, we could charge this, but this is a shield wall. It'll do a lot of damage to our cavalry. Over here, it might be okay, though. The Anglo Android with their big swords and axes are just cutting through shields. Like butter. Like warm butter. So I hope you guys have been enjoyed the siege so far. We still are we're coming into the closing stages, but and it is still kind of interesting to see who's going to win. I mean, they've certainly still got a lot. Obviously, the Swiss and the uh, Kiev have been forced back to this area, but I have seen defenders come out victorious from these scenarios. So I wouldn't put it past them yet. I wouldn't put it past them that yet. This might be one of those uh, those times that we see it. This is a strange angle. You can see, like, look at all the abysses that they've still got to fight through down here. There's a lot. I mean, there's still plenty over there as well. And these uh, archers are good in combat. That's why you bring them. That's why in some scenarios people go no hybrid units. Because they just hate fighting a unit that can fight really well in combat and also shoot you. It's kind of like the Sparbara in the New World mod. If you haven't watched any of the New World mod uh, content, it's for Rome 2. I've got plenty on the channel. Uh, definitely go and check some of it out. But even doing it, they're a Persian units, and they're even doing like, I have a Persian campaign currently running. But yeah, they're they're a cool unit as well. They kind of remind me of uh, the Abbasids in this, apart from the Abbasids don't have spears and shields. So uh, yeah, at this point, I was thinking I said my uh, Mamluk lancers over here to go and capture this uh, tower, so we can at least just go and sit here and not get shot at. And uh, well, it's. It's looking interesting. I mean, the shock infantry down in the Anglo Rancho is starting to lose. It's losing, I think, mainly because they send in their men at arms. How they got. Look at that. They got men just balancing up here on the wall. Oh, it's good to see Attila being buggy as always. Oh, jeez. Okay, yeah, so at this point, I think they have their culvery to the uh, nice here. There it is, their culvery back here. I think they're manually firing. I could be wrong. But yeah, they are like firing. I mean, you can't really see because of the pillars. They're firing like up there and onto uh, the exposed units on the slope. So I mean, like, look, there's a big hole there. That's probably from a cold rain. I don't know. Look at the blood and the gore on these guys. I think we've got uh, some Kievian troops in here. No, these are men at arms. Okay. Oh, no, we did have um, some um, guard axemen in here. Okay. But, I mean, yeah, we're just taking our time now and, like, focusing down, like, these... They've got their axemen up here. They And that's the issue that you have when you make this final fence. And you uh, have, like, exposed units like this and we still have ammo. You're going to get shot before this... Ma because this is a nasty unit, so we're going to, like, damage it before it can go into combat. And they're finally falling back, but there's nowhere on this in this area here that they can't get shot at um, by any of our archers. And there you go, the Anglo of Ranjo is back to... Like combat even. Oh no. <laughs> Just like I say that, it's not. Um, I think they're getting a bit closer with their artillery now. But I have started to fire mine as well on this side. We are opening up 
shots over here. Hopefully we can get a shot soon. Oh, there we go. Oh, jeez. A little bit of lag there for some reason. I don't know what happened there. I do apologize. Um, but yeah, there's a hole, a hole through the unit there. That was the uh, cause of the artillery. Yeah, I don't know why that lagged. Um, I think it might have been because I moved as the artillery fired. I'm not really sure. Um, it was very bizarre. Oh, jeez, another great shot by the uh, artillery. Just like taking out like about six men there. I mean, it's not even like killing the men. That's the effective part. It's uh, if you can kill them. Oh, uh, it's not if you can kill them. If you can uh, like route them. You just need to cause the morale damage. They're, they're being shot by artillery. See, this does not do great, like, minus 10 uh, damage to morale. Only for, like, 10 seconds. For those 10 seconds, that could be a long 10 seconds. And, I mean, they're starting to fall back. These smurred in... Oh, these are copper shields. They do have smurred infantry in there. But they're getting absolutely hammered by archers, by artillery. And here they come. We're sending up the Nafatoons. And, uh, well, we should break through this, this defense here. I think they're going to fall back their swords to charge down these axemen. Yeah. Uh, I can't really get a great angle. These slopes are never great. But uh, yeah, the Axemen are in there now. And uh, it looks like... No, it looked like the uh, the the engineers were coming up. But uh, it seems like they're not going to anymore. I think I plan to send them around here and attack here now. I think if I remember rightly. Yep, here they come. They're coming around the corner. I was like, right, well, we'll deal with them there then. And uh, we'll see what happens. But yes, yeah, so I mean, it looks like, does look like a, oh, God's sake. okay, so we are back, and uh, yeah, I kind of uh, just got rid of the end of the recording because it was just so laggy, so I've uh, basically re reloaded up the battle replay, and it seems to be a lot more, uh, well, not laggy, but like that, so we're just going to go from the end to like the last two minutes, which was what there is, but I mean, the, even though it's the last two minutes, there are some glorious things that take place in this point. And uh, as you can see, we have the Barrett engineers getting ready, and they're coming up for a uh, explosive end to this uh, battle. And we've got some, we've got some swords here, we've got some guards, and we've got some ang Angler of and We've got cavalry ready, and uh, I mean, yeah, the engineers are about to throw off some explosives, and let's see what happens. I mean, they're rolling down the hill, which is an issue. But oh god, that unit is just gone. Oh, and he's blowing up the guard. Oh, no. And the cavalry's going up, trying to take advantage of the like the hole in the line. The infantry really needs to go as well. But, uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, I think I just it's just the blowing up everything was just hilarious. And they still have ammo. I mean, they can still blow up some more. I mean, they lost some uh, of their own. I think they might have blown up one of their own. Like, one th went into their own lines. I'm not sure. But they're going to throw another load. And there they go again. I actually did hit mainly uh, infantry. I mean, there's a bit of cavalry being hit, but it did a good job. And, but yeah, you can see here the abbasids have broken through. And uh, yeah, the Swiss and the uh, Kievian troops are breaking. It's a bit of a mess here in the final final capture point. Cutting down just about any swords they can find. Any Swiss that are left. And we've got uh, the general over here. Let's see him fight out. The general for the Swiss in his glorious black armor. I mean, he does look good. I won't. I won't lie. He does look good. I mean, he's hardly in black though. He's like covered in blood in the red of uh, the dead Swiss and nice. Uh, uh, really, I mean, it's just loads of dead Byzantines and uh, Swiss down there. And the men at arms are still there. They're still fighting. Oh, they're still fighting hard. Uh, but I think, yeah. Well, actually, no. They're broken. They're, they're not fighting so hard. But uh, yeah, here we go to the last few seconds and I thought the defenders might have had it they had really good units left and suddenly if they had the war they might have got them out um, and alive but uh, I don't think they made many mistakes I think maybe the Swiss defending this uh, random choke point here was a bit strange with their pikes and they eventually got killed by the um, Greek fire but I don't think they made any major mistakes we'll have a look at the end results and have a look and see uh, who did so well so yes I was playing as the uh, Abbasid Empire I got 313 kills with my general. Uh, my best uh, footwear jund got 190 kills. 
431 with the uh, Mamluk foot guards and 367 with another. Uh, my Cav 154. My Barad engineers get 92 kills, but more the morale damage they do than is their kills and breaking up choke points. And then 122 with the Culverine, which is not too bad. Then Aiden, who's playing as the Empire of Nicaea, getting 190 kills with Anglo of Ranjoy, 143 with his uh, swords. His guards getting 102 kills, his archers getting 172 and 179. And his cavalry getting 252 and 313. And his, uh, and his um, fire, Greek fire guys getting 198 kills. So they did really well, actually. Then Anzac, who was playing as uh, uh, the Swiss, uh, he got 59 kills with his general. He got 78 with his men at arms. His swords not really doing that well. His pikes, again, performing poorly because he got like murdered by Greek fire. Um, his uh, Kyberg foot knights getting 50 kills, but and his uh, foot nobles only getting 33. But that's what happens when you bring tier 1 against tier 3. It's a learning curve there. Um, his co copper shields getting 100, um, not 100, uh, getting 90 kills, sorry. Um, his archers not doing so well, and his cavalry getting 86 and 76. Interestingly, his uh, tier 1 getting more than the, tier, uh, than the general's bodyguard. Then uh, Dodgy Gob, who's playing as Kiev, getting 84 kills with his... Uh, well, general, he got 50 kills with uh, Axemen, but they were getting focused on by archers, so it's no surprise that they got low kills. Um, his heavy smurred spears only getting 22 kills. His smurred uh, infantry getting 43. Um, his rataniki getting uh, 72 kills, the best one. And his best units in the entire battle were his dismounted four, which is no surprise, getting 143 and 120. They may have racked up a lot more kills if they'd been allowed to uh, carry on firing and not been murdered in the uh, streets. But if you guys enjoyed, then do not forget to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here. Uh, if you'd like to see a face reveal, uh, don't don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to hit that 2K mark. And don't forget to leave a comment as well. I know you guys enjoy uh, show your support. I know you guys do enjoy uh, watching 12.12, and I do as well. The absolute chaos that you can see sometimes really does want me to come and do more of these videos. So don't forget to leave a comment show your support. And until next time, Legionnaires...